Hey guys, welcome back to the Kingdom Life Podcast. Uh, this is episode six, uh, and today we have the absolute honour and privilege uh, of hearing from Steve Swenson. How are you going today, Steve? Oh, I'm dangerously well, Brian. It's <laughs> so good to be well. with you. Episode okay. six is the best one. Best one yet? Best one since the fifth. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, for those who don't know, uh, my wife Em can't be with us today. Um, she's looking after Elise, but we have Steve, and Steve's going to bring uh, some epic, uh, absolute awesome thoughts around being faithful uh, with the little. Um, and Steve, maybe just for those who don't know you, because a lot of uh, our listeners are from Kingdom Hope, but there would be other people that aren't from Kingdom Hope tuning in uh, today to listen to this. Maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, what does life look like for Steve? Okay, well, I'm uh, uh, a very excited uh, husband and father. Um, I have one wife, been married, <laughs> married to Sherry since 1994, and I have two kids, yep. Jera and Nathan, yep. and uh, together we make up the Swenson clan. Come on. Um, I grew up in church. My dad was a pastor. My parents were pastoring a church, and uh, I grew up in that world. Mm. Um, and then myself, even though I never wanted to be a pastor, ended up as one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then from there went into local council for a while cool. and then find myself now with a consulting uh, business, yep, yep, um, and also doing ministry. Right. So, how do you fit all that in? Do you have any hobbies? Like, what do you get up to when you're not either working or with the fam, or what? what any any interesting hobbies that people may not know about Steve? Uh, well, <laughs> interesting is relative. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, but not my relatives. <laughs> uh, so, um, I have um, a son who loves four wheel driving. Yeah, and he's taken me out in his car a few times. Before we went out the first time, I had jet black hair like you. Right. Uh, but yep. uh, he does pretty extreme four-wheel driving, so I like spending time with him. Cool. Love going out, exercising with my wife. I've got yeah. a jet ski, love doing cool. that. And uh, heading up on the broad water. Yeah. Maybe over to Tipplers for some food and then yeah. back. So, it's yeah, important. It you got to get the food in there with everything gotta else. you got to get food. <laughs> you got to get food. Yeah. Well, today um, the topic is, you know, being faithful with the little and, you know, speaking to young adults because a lot of, you know, young adults are tuning in today, listening to this. What, um, I suppose, what does this even mean to you? Like being faithful with the little, like if someone hears that phrase, like is there anything that first comes to mind or I don't know, is there anything, I don't know, that you can just share on this? Well, I think it's more just um, when when you spoke to me about the title, yeah. the instant thing that came to me is like, where do we start out? Yeah. Because everyone talks about success mm. and uh, a lot of the people that we aspire to be like uh, – they are seen almost sometimes as an overnight success, but if you really scratch below the surface, it's been a 25, 30 year process. Yes. And it's that they're only recognised in the last year or two of what they've achieved. Yeah. But there's been a lot of groundwork done along the way. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose, is there any examples or people that have come to mind, whether it's yourself or other people that you've seen on that, you know, 25, 30 year journey that you're talking about? Uh there's probably plenty of examples. There's, there's, so there's, there's plenty of examples. You're have to, to pluck one out of the hat. Well, to pluck one out of the hat, yep. it, it probably it probably is difficult. But I think even our our senior pastors at yeah. King, Kingdom Hope, yep. you know, like our Pastor Josh and Bonnie Pello, people yeah. look at them and go, hey, "How do people so young yeah. um, achieve so much? They've got family and mm. they're pastoring a great church and have great such great vision for the future, but they yeah. don't see the years of faithful service that both of them have done behind the scenes that nobody has recognised." Um, to set them up for where they are today. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And even in that scenario, like, could you paint a picture of, like, maybe their starting point and a few things that you've either heard or observed about, like, their life? Like, are there small things that you've seen or observed in even Pastor Josh and Bonnie that, you know, are principles or points that people could even, I don't know, take away for today? Oh, possibly so. But I, I'm loath to tell somebody else's story in the yeah. sense that, it might be my my perceived observation, yep. and they'd be a better person to, to yeah. do that. But one of the things that I do know of both of them is that they have built uh, important disciplines into their life mm. um, that will hold them in good stead for years. Yep. And the other thing is um, one of the disciplines that they've built into their life is humility. Yeah, you know, when we, when we talk about success, it's almost like you've got to be this um, – uh, arrogant, bold person yeah. to achieve success. Yep. Uh, when really the greatest success that you can be or the more that you humble yourself, mm. it actually creates a greater platform for effective. To me, success is about being effective with your life. Yeah, great. It's not about the accolades of people. Yeah. And so uh, I think, you know, humility 
is one of the things that they model yeah. and has set them on a pathway to having even greater influence and effectiveness in whatever they do. Yeah, true. And then maybe turning the tables then onto you because you mm-hmm. can probably share more about maybe yourself. Is there been something in your life that you started off maybe really – started off really small and then you're seeing grow or you know whether it's ministry related or personal related work what whatever that looks like is there something where yeah you've seen yourself go from something develop something small to to growing something uh yeah i guess from my perspective i I think um when you asked me to come and be on the podcast and yeah and even presented the the theme a little bit. Yeah. I was a bit intimidated by that because the seasons of your life almost determine differences, you yeah. know, like the there's differences required or different buy-in required at different times or what you're able to give at different times uh simply because the circumstances of your life change. Yeah. But um you know, if I think of aspirational things that I wanted to be I remember when I first started as a youth pastor in a church, mm-hmm. I aspired to be like some of the leaders of the one of the bigger youth movements uh, around Australia, and that was Youth Alive at the time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to be uh, like those guys that were yeah. up on the platform. And um, I used to think, oh, you know, I would love to be used in that way to bring hope and life to other young people that yep. might be there. And uh, I actually learned more about... Um, being a success not by studying how to be a speaker on that stage but by saying yes to the smaller opportunities I was given right at the beginning. Great. I I remember um, I was part of an organising group for Youth Alive in Queensland and I was given um, the incredible honour. Yeah, yeah. We had a a concert at Albert Park in the amphitheatre there and I was given the incredible honour of of looking after where everyone would sit. (laughs) The logistics of that. Logistics, yep. Yeah. and then at the end of the night, while everybody else who had organised the event that I was a part of organising went to the Pancake Manor for supper, yeah, I walked around with my youth group with wheelie bins picking up rubbish. Yeah. And in that moment I learnt that – well, actually I didn't learn it in that <laughs> moment. Yeah. I was thinking the dogs are eating <laughs> yeah. pancakes, pancakes and yeah. I'm picking up someone's half-eaten hot dog. <laughs> didn't taste too bad, the barbecue sauce one anyway. But, <laughs> but I, I – as I reflect back now, yeah, they were the things that taught me to prepare me for the opportunity that came up later on. Mm, that's great. And if you can embrace those small moments yeah. and not despise them, yep. it will actually prepare you and make your path straighter yeah. to even greater opportunities. Yeah, and I think even just hearing that story, it's what was done in the unseen yep. in terms of like your service and your heart mm-hmm. posture yeah. and all those things that – as you said, everyone's out eating pancakes, but you and the, the youth team at the time were cleaning up yep. um, and just making all of that happen. And you yeah. looking after logistics is always fun um, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're not a big fan. But, <laughs> I mean, again, that would have, you know, done something in you and built character into you. So I think that's a really good takeaway is that, you know, whatever you're doing in the unseen, you don't just, like, waste that time or kind of don't downplay the unseen or those sort of moments. I think that's, like, a pretty important takeaway based on what you're sharing. Yeah, yeah and we all Almost, we almost deify the result sometimes for mm. someone. Like we go, oh, how good is it that, you know, you could get up there and do that. Yeah. But I think if we were actually sit down with those people and scratch below the surface, mm. they'd have a hundred more stories than I have yeah. of what they did. Right. Um, so, you know, um, that's I guess that's a bit of a takeaway there. Yeah, I think that's great. And I suppose to those as well that like before we got on today, we were talking about, you know, sometimes, you know, as young adults, we feel like we're so busy and then we look at the calendar or we look at our schedule and there's not too much happening. But, you know, even with, say, our schedule, something so basic as our time, Mm. how can we uh, be faithful with the little, you know, the little hours in our week or the, the 30 minutes here, the 45 minutes there, like... Have you got any, I don't know, tips or advice around though for those who are like wondering how to steward their time better or how to be faithful with their time? Because that's a resource or something that we all have yeah. in a similar quantity yeah. or the same quantity. Um, so yeah, is there any sort of anything you can speak into that? I'm going to speak to all the people who are a bit like me yeah. and are not as organised in their <laughs> life. Yep. You know, because you can say I'm so busy, but we've all got 168 hours. Yeah. Right. Um, but I think. The great power of using your time effectively is not only in the things you say yes to, but the things you're prepared to say no to. Mm. 
and prioritising around those things. And I I get this wrong sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think for anyone who's watching or listening today, don't beat yourself up about that. Learn from it. Great. And learn how to prioritise better. In that 168 hours, find out the things that you really have to do. Mm. I mean, if you were to go through and do an audit of your week... Yeah. And you sat down and thought, well, how much time do I spend watching the cricket or how yeah. much time do I spend watching Netflix or how much time do I spend eating? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. usually that's quick. But, <laughs> yeah. but if you were really to audit your time, mm. you would find and, – and then say no to some of the things that are not really what you need. Yep. It would – you'd have a lot more margin. You would, yeah. Um, to do the little things really well. Mm-hmm. That will set you up for greater things in the future. And then, how did you come across even to say? Because, like, I know what you mean by an audit of your week. But <clears throat> was there any resource or any? Did anyone sit down with you and do that? Or was that something you just thought to do? Like, maybe just talk a little bit around that. Oh, look, it's not. It's not a one-off event. Yeah. Um, like your and e- your life and Emily's <laughs> life <laughs> yeah. have changed since beautiful Elise Matilda has come along. That's right. Um, She's here. But what was okay? six months ago for you yeah. in what you put your time into is totally different now. Yeah, it is. So it's not a one-off event and I mm. think it's more um, one of the great leadership lessons we can learn in life no matter what age you are is to take time to self-reflect. Good, yeah. To think back and go, okay, I've got it wrong. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, sometimes it feels like to me that that uh, some things are falling off the table and it, and I want to actually be proactive about that, not reactive. Yep, so gold. the more that you can actually sit down and ask yourself, okay, how did I go last week? Mm. I don't have a tool. Yep. I, I don't have a spreadsheet. I don't have an app I can lead you to. Maybe we could come up with one, Brian, yeah, there and we we'd never have to work again. We'd have 168 <laughs> hours yeah. to ride jet skis. <laughs> uh, but but I think if you can do the go through the discipline of yeah. sitting down yeah. and evaluating what are the things I need to do yeah, and then – and it would only take 15 minutes, realistically, like if that. But I, I think what I like what I'm hearing is that if you just set aside some time mm. and maybe it's a Sunday night, Monday, whatever suits for people, but, yeah, just kind of being aware at least of where your time went last week, where your time yeah. is going forward. And if you're faithful, again, with that little practice, because, again, it seems small, 15 minutes, mm. like you can sometimes go, well, does it matter? Because yeah. I think that's the question um, a lot of times we can ask is like, does it matter or is it worth it? Or those are the sort of questions yeah. we can throw um, at the small thing. So I think, yeah, realizing, no, it does matter because if I do, if I'm diligent in this 50 odd times in a year, it's going to pay off uh, over the long run if I'm doing that. Yep. So yep. yeah, no, I like that. And then maybe another one, cause we just touched on time, but maybe with finance, like there might be some young adults that have got, I don't know, five or 10 hours of work a week, or maybe some are working even 30 hours, but have bills or whatever. Like mm. maybe speak to someone, um, that is thinking about even from a finance or a money perspective, like they might only have a hundred dollars saved or five hundred dollars saved. Like they, they might seem like it's not a lot, but like how do they shift their mindset around that and be diligent with whatever they're doing with their finances? Well, there's two things I would say to them because I've been there, yeah, and um, there's different seasons of my life that I will continue to be there because you never have enough resource for the vision that's in your life. Sorry, hang on, what was that again? You never have enough resource yep. for the vision that's in your life. Right, if God's good. given you a vision, it's usually beyond your resource. And then you've got to actually right. surrender that resource to yes. him. Yep. So, um, you just skipped over that really quickly. But again, you've got to be surrendered to what God's wanting you to do. And generally the vision that he's given you is more than the resource you got. Yeah. And, you, and, and so that's where the supernatural comes in. He does yeah. the super, I do the natural. Yeah, and uh, I place that in yeah. his hands. I, I guess the the best um, picture I can draw of that yeah. comes out of scripture rather than right. a personal thing. Yeah. Matthew yeah. fourteen. Yep. You have, um, you know, Jesus is standing on the side of a hill with five thousand people. Yeah. Some say it's ten thousand with women and children. Yep. Um, maybe more. And he says to the disciples, "Let's feed all these people." <laughs> yeah. And uh, Andrew, the disciple Andrew, brings a little boy to Jesus, and he, and he says. Well, we've got five loaves and two fish. Mm. Um, but he surrendered that to Jesus. Yeah. Jesus took it and used it and fed everybody. Yeah. And there were 12 basketfuls left. Great. So the principle to me is not concentrating on the amount you have. Yeah. But looking at, okay, um, 
what do you actually have in your hand? Yeah. We concentrate so much on what we don't have. Yes. Yeah. And we don't concentrate on what we do. Yeah. Uh, there was a guy that used to be in a church that I pastored years ago and he said, oh, I don't really have any gifts to use for Jesus. Yeah. He was an older guy, but he said, my best is past. I don't, I don't have anything that I can connect with people. Yeah. I, I want to help people. I want to get alongside young men, but I don't know what to do. Yeah. And you love golf. So I said to them, I actually asked him that question, what's in your hand? Yeah. He said, I play golf. Yeah. I said, well, why don't you use that? And the time that you put into that to be a blessing to other people. So he yeah. started inviting people along with him and suddenly he became more effective with the time that was for him, yeah, himself, his recreation. Yeah. Still had recreation time, but he was able to invest that into other people. So that's a question I'd ask some young adults. If they don't feel like they've got a lot of resource, don't yeah. look at what you don't have. What's in your hand? Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, And then secondly, yeah. don't look at amounts. Yeah. Look at percentages. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a mental shift, but yeah. it, it makes a big difference, and yeah. you, you go on with that. Yeah, well, well, a hundred dollars. Yeah, doesn't seem a lot well, for, for some of us. I remember a hundred dollars <laughs> yeah. when a hundred dollars was like, whoa, I hit yeah. the big time. But you know, a hundred dollars <laughs> when you know that somebody's actually giving ten thousand dollars. Yeah, or has ten thousand dollars to invest in others. Mm. You feel like what I've got is so insignificant. Yeah, but if you're prepared, like if they chose to give ten percent. Yeah. You got to start with what's small yeah. and let that build. Yeah. Because if you get the principle in place while it's small, yeah, it doesn't seem like a big deal. Yeah. No, I can definitely testify to that. Like yeah. when I first started working, like I think fifteen dollars was like the first a paycheck I got or whatever. It was probably cash from yeah. indoor sports and action arenas. But um, yeah. So like a dollar fifty was the tie there. But yeah. and 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 then as you sort of grow and as God keeps on blessing you, obviously the dollar fifty will go to ten dollars or a hundred dollars or it just keeps growing. And yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Like once you've got that habit in place or once you've got that discipline yeah. and, and realize that yeah, it, it, we've got to be obedient to God and He's asked us in that way to yeah. to give and be generous. So. It, it's not that hard now to give because you just know what's what's in your hand and yeah. So I think um yeah it's a, it's definitely a good uh, it's a good principle to look at it as percentages rather than like dollar amounts. I think that's really a good takeaway. Yeah, and also generosity is not an amount; it's yes. a heart. Yeah, it's not even an action; it's mm. your heart. And yeah. if you can be generous um, and look for ways to be generous, yeah, and refresh others, the Bible says you'll be refreshed. Yeah. Yeah. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive as well. So, yeah, I mean, absolutely. we need to take that principle on too. So, and then maybe just a third one, um, just as I'm thinking of examples, because again, people are listening in thinking, how is this going to affect my life? How am I going to implement it? But I was just thinking around like family and friendships, like, Sometimes even I would say in friendships, maybe we get complacent. Like maybe we think I've been best friends with that guy for, I don't know, five, ten years. Like if I just say no to him a few times, is it going to matter? Or maybe at home um, with your family, if I don't do the the chores for a couple of weeks or a couple of days, what, whatever it is, you know what I'm, I'm getting at. If you let complacency, say, slip in in friendships or family, you know, what's the impact of that? And if we're th- how can we be faithful with our friendships and in our family? <laughs> to be honest, this is one of the ones that I really struggle with. Mm. It's not that I don't love my family and my friends, but, you know, we won't go back to that 168 hours we have. Yeah. And I get so busy doing what's urgent. Yeah. Instead of concentrating on what's important. Yeah. For me as a married man, I went and stood at an altar and gave a vow before God to love and honour and cherish my wife. And so I have to be faithful to that. Yes. But... I can have such urgent things or things that that um, seem to take my attention, yeah, and don't fulfil that vow. Yeah, God has given me two beautiful kids, and sometimes the busyness of life and the pursuit of wanting to be a good provider, even, yeah, um, makes me make them the lesser priority than I should. Yeah. And even friendships. Yeah. So, uh, again, I think in a lot of these things, you've got to take an honest look at yourself. Yeah. The Bible tells you to look at yourself with sober judgment. <laughs> it's good. And and it's really hard because yeah. it's not – it's not a, when you do that – Yeah. Um, it can almost be confronting. Oh, it's very confronting. confronting yeah. It's very confronting. Yeah. And so I promised I would not be self-abasing here today when I was talking to some people about coming and talking about this because yeah, I had a yeah. chat today – 
saying I was coming to talk. <laughs> and they said, yeah. well, make sure you don't, you know, <laughs> yeah. talk all negative. But I, I just want to be yeah. transparent with you. Yeah. There are times I get it totally wrong. Mm. And that's where I think you've got to have relationship with people in your life um, who will actually love you enough to tell you, yeah, listen, mate, you, you're neglecting some of the things that you should be faithful in. Yeah. And you're being faithful to some of the things that should be a second priority. That's really good. Yeah, no, that's really good. I think uh, similarly there's probably times when I was like even living with my parents before I got married where I reckon there'd be times where I wasn't honouring them. Like there'd be chores I had to do and, you know, whoopsies, it doesn't happen or there's this excuse, that excuse, whatever. And again, that probably was unseen. Like your people in your life don't see necessarily how you go around the house or how you're interacting with your parents sure. or how you're interacting with your siblings. But mm. again, all of that is, you know, part of our life and we want to honour people, but we also want to honour God. So we mm. honour God by honouring the people in our world. And I right. do think that's a really important thing with being faithful with the little, because again, if you get complacent with your family, like you're not going to be faithful with the chores. You're not going to be faithful with encouraging um, your family or even in your friends. So yeah. I think, um, it's really good that you touched on that with vulnerability. And I think, yeah, if we all just take a sober look at ourselves, yeah. then maybe there's a few shifts we can make after hearing the podcast today or, yeah. or really, yeah, change up in our, in our world. So I suppose with all that, was there um, one just piece of gold um, or just anything else you just wanted to maybe share uh, on this subject or topic today? Um, look, I think, I think going back to the beginning of where we started, I think, I think it's important to understand that uh, there are different definitions of success. Yeah. And don't underestimate the power of the little. Mm. You, you, you can't... Um, there's things that you would love to achieve in your life and you're not there yet. And we always... We're, we're encouraged even in Scripture to have progressive vision, mm. but we miss the now moments. Yeah. Because they're they're little, seemingly. Well, my vision is all the way down here, yeah. <laughs> but I'm stuck here, and so we're 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 not mindful. Yeah. You know, some people don't like the word mindfulness because it's a bit you know new agey new to agey. them. Yeah, yeah. But but the truth is to be mindful where you are now. Yeah. And don't miss those God moments that He brings along in that journey. Absolutely. We yeah. Um. So, um. I guess. Yes, have vision. And look for the destination, but don't miss the God moments in the journey. Yeah. Because that one text of encouragement, yeah, that one coffee you bought for somebody, that one happy meal you bought for somebody. It's happy um, meals are gold. Happy meals are gold. <laughs> Get the Take toy, that away from book. today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sponsored yeah. by McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, um, those things along the way, you can never underestimate that. No, 100%. Yeah. yeah. I... I sent an uh, encouraging text to a mate that way back in 1996 when I was a youth pastor struggling with a small youth group, mm. he invited me to come and do a week of high school evangelism. Yeah. We took this drama through the schools. I was Superman <laughs> yeah. and Rocky in the thing. I remember <laughs> going to Woodridge High School and the kids jumping out bashing into me because I had <laughs> yeah. po- boxing gloves on. Yeah. But I caught that week um, – through osmosis, through yeah. being with him, yeah. passion for um, not yet Christian people mm. and a level of creativity they would not have got. Yeah. And he didn't know that just investing in me and inviting me along, yeah. which wasn't big on his part, it was a little thing. Yeah. It, it actually transformed. But even from your end to say yes. So, you yeah. know, two people being faithful with the Correct. little again. Correct. But yeah. now I believe that some of the passion I have in me continues for youth, young adults in our city. Yeah. Because someone invested in me in a little back there. Wow. And, you know, now 30 <laughs> years down the track. Yeah. It's turned into a giant oak tree. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Offering shade to many. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, well, thanks so much, Steve. It's honestly been awesome just chatting this topic through with you today, being faithful uh, with the little. And um, I know our young adult listeners and people watching this are going to get so much out of what we've shared today. And I think 
if there's anything I can leave you guys with, it's just to, to maybe just take one key thing away from what Steve was sharing today. There was honestly so much wisdom and gold in it. I think for me that the takeaway was that, you know, our vision is probably always going to be greater than our resource. So it's knowing how to be mindful in that process or just trusting God through that. Um, and, and along the way, just being faithful with the little that we, that we have. So uh, we'll see you guys later. Um, we'll see you guys next month. Bye.